In this video, we'll write the net ionic equation for PbOH2 plus HCl. So we have lead to hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. First thing we need to do with net ionic equations, we need to write the balanced molecular equation. It looks like we have two CLs, put it two here, and then looks like this would balance our molecular equation. So once we've done that, we can start to work on the net ionic. So we want to write the states for each of these substances now that we have this balanced. Lead hydroxide, lead to hydroxide. Hydroxides often are not soluble. We should probably look that up just to make sure. So we have this table here, a solubility table, and we can look up lead is way down at the bottom here, Pb2 plus, and hydroxide right here. So we go down and then we go over. And you see that I there. That means that lead hydroxide, lead to hydroxide, that's insoluble. So we're going to write an S after that because it's not going to dissolve. It's going to be a solid. It'll actually just be sitting there when we put our hydrochloric acid over it. So we've got that figured out. While we're here, we could look at the lead to chloride as well, because chlorides, they're almost always soluble, as you can see. And lead to chloride is one of the exceptions. So lead to chloride is only slightly soluble. Because of that, we're going to write S. We're going to keep that as a solid as well. Only a little bit of it will dissolve. So I'm glad we checked that on our solubility table here, because as you can see, these chlorides here, they're mostly soluble except for this lead chloride and a silver chloride. All right, let's get on with the ionic equation. Once we have the states, next we're going to split the strong electrolytes into their ions. So these are the things that are aqueous. So we actually should write the states for the hydrochloric acid. That's going to be aqueous. That's a strong acid. Water, that's just a liquid. So now we can split the strong electrolytes apart into their ions. This is a solid. So when we have these solids in net ionic equations, like this PbOH2, that solid's going to stay together. Pb, it's not split apart. It's solid, OH2. We'll leave it like that. I'll write the states for these at the end. I won't do that now. Hydrogen on the periodic table, that is in group 1. It has a positive charge. And then the chloride ion here, that's negative. So we can split these up because that's aqueous. It's a strong electrolyte. It's a strong acid. So we have H+, plus, which will be aqueous, and we have two of them. So we'll put a 2 in front, plus we have the chloride ion, Cl-. minus, And this 2 applies to the whole thing here. So we'll have two chloride ions. So those are the reactants in our net ionic equation. On the product side, we don't split liquids apart either. So solids, liquids, and gases, we don't split those apart in net ionic equations. So I have 2 H2O here, plus another solid, which we won't split apart. So we'll put PbCl2. This is considered the total ionic equation, or the complete ionic equation. After that, we'll cross out spectator ions. These are ions that appear on both sides. But if you look at this, everything is unique. There's nothing on the reactants that appears in the products. So the complete ionic equation, that's the same as the net ionic equation. Let me clean this up, add the states in, and then we'll have it nicely formatted. So this is the net ionic equation for PbOH2 plus HCl, lead to hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid. We have our solid lead to hydroxide. We have our hydrogen ions, two of them, two chloride ions, liquid water plus solid PbCl2. So it's important when you write net ionic equations to check and see if the actual substance is going to be soluble. If it's not soluble, then it's going to be a solid. And we need to write that in the net ionic equation, and then we don't split those up in the final net ionic equation. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.